Hello folks, welcome back from the one, the only Hobo Tom. Cheers. Is this where you concoction? Ah, uh, Blue Dew. Not bad stuff. I'm finally getting caught up on my videos. But I'd like to thank everyone for their patience. But first, before I get to the videos, very quick recap from the previous weekend. Yeah, it was a hectic week. Um, for Slime Anniversary, I did not choose matches good. Um, I forget who made this. Was that Weirdo? And I did Money in the Bank? Or if I did Slime Anniversary and the Weirdo did this? I think the Weirdo did this, so I blame him. So I blame... The Von, the Von Breaker of men, Tom Von Break. Yeah, he's not necessarily all there, folks. Cuckoo Looney Tunes, as in serial killer, like Fruit Loops. And if you know that movie reference, you gotta shoot me a comment and let me know. Slam anniversary, very simple. I was a mark. Or someone was a mark. However, for money in the bank, wow. Even with the bonus matches, six out of seven. Not too bad. Yeah, and the only one I missed. Oh, wait, did I get them all right? Oh, no, the only one I... Oh, wow. The only one I did miss... Got Big E. Well, actually, I missed two. I missed the woman's money in the bank, so that's not too bad. So seven matches at six out of seven. I got the bonus... I got the bonus right. I got my Stone Cold Lock right. Um, the match of the night I got right. And the only other one, the snooze I got right. And the only one, all the other one I got wrong was I had Viking Raiders going over AJ Styles and Omos. You know what that means? I'm in the head of one Jean, of one Paul Levesque. Well, that's good. So I finally got that out of the way. Um, I had kind of an eventful day. Maybe when I do my AEW preview or review. Yeah, sometime. Um, I'll show you guys what I did this past weekend. So, you know what? Let's rewind the clock a little bit. Let's go back to some Monday Night Raw. Because you know what? John Cena sucks. John Cena sucks. John Cena sucks. I need a drink. Yes. John Cena came out. Um, Matt Riddell came out too. The only reason Matt Riddell was there is because this leads to our first match of the night. A six-man tag team event. Oh, and like I always do, happy birthday, Jacob. Yeah, I'll have to find that. Thank you, video. Whoa. Man, I just saw that... Time. I gotta get this done. I gotta get this done. Yeah, so we had John. Um, so this again led up to our six man tag team match. Uh, it was Johnny Mundo, or I'm sorry, John Morrison, AJ Styles, and Omos taking on Matt Riddle and the Viking Raiders. Uh, Mundo was hitting the big kicks, Matt. He had a great judo throw. That was great. Uh, Mundo 
Man, he was getting beat up a lot. Probably because he was maybe the fresher man, and I, I don't know. I know Omos is younger than he is. I don't know what Morrison's age is, though. AJ, I think, is older than him. Omos, I know, is younger. Riddle's younger. So that makes sense. The Viking Raiders, eh. It's so hard to tell because they've been in so many indie promotions. But, yeah. So, Mundo took, took the brunt of this. Um, and of course, everyone decides to do flippy stuff. Mundo, AJ, the Viking Raiders, Matt Riddell. All except for Omos. Which is good. Because you don't want to see your big guy doing the flippy stuff. That's probably pretty bad. Although, I think he did like use AJ as a weapon, though. That's always fun to see. I do like people being used as human weapons. That's good stuff. Uh, let's see here. What else was there? Yeah, Omos was a monster kill that was great. AJ Styles. Amazing snap suplex. Oh, and my one friend did confirm there was a team called the Hate Club early WCW. Um, he says it does sound right that they would be the jobbers like the Nasty Boys um, Varsity Club. Very typical. So yes, I got some, I, I knew something in my jumbled wrestling memory was right. I still think AJ Styles was an ECW as Styles is in, in cash. That name, that tag team name just sticks out to me. And again, though, I think that was before ECW went like way too buggo. And I think they were like a young tag team that kind of like jobbed out to everyone, but but yeah, they were the young upstarts. So yeah, that's the question for AJ Styles. One day, if he walks in, AJ Styles shows up in rack room shoes. I have to ask that question just to satisfy my own curiosity. But AJ Styles is so good. Uh, Mundo and Matt Riddell. They spent a lot of the match against each other, which, which makes sense. Um, AJ and Eric. Great striking back and forth. has got Ivar. Uh, he missed the moonsault. Uh, Mundo missed Starship Pain. And I saw that. I'm like, eh. It wasn't bad, though. Uh, again, we had the heel miscue. And then we had the Viking experience. On to, I think, Mundo. Riddle and the Viking Experience wins. Can't really complain about this match, though. Solid cheeseburger match. Then we had Jackson Riker promo. Oh, which led it. Hopefully, this is a blow off. It tends to be with. Oh, walk with a lies. It was Jackson Riker taking on Elias in a Symphony of Destruction match. Which means there were a whole bunch of instruments ringside. Um, for the most part, they spent most of the match outside and using the in instruments on each other. <laughs> it's just funny to see Elias getting the gong. However, the crowd, they're not satisfied with just instruments. That Texas crowd is bloodthirsty. They want tables, and they let the wrestlers know, we want tables. You gotta love it when the live crowd takes control of stuff. Um, then, ouch. That trumpet, listen, trumpets are heavy brass instruments. That can't feel good. And then the drum set got used. Yeah, even they did the yay boos on top of a grand piano, which was pretty cool. Uh, Elias, he used, he broke the bass cello over Elias. Elias, I think Elias got busted open too. That's good. In a bluff match like this, just a little juice. It wasn't a crimson mask all over everything. A little trickle of blood. It makes sense though. So that was good. Then there was a superplex to the outside through the tables. Jackson Riker wins. And I honestly hope that's the end of this. Although it was fun. Like, again, this tends to be the Elias blow-off feud. It 
was a solid cheeseburger match. And then was uh, Mansoor and Mustafa Ali. Could they be that new tag team partner? I don't know. We'll see. Again, boo Sonya Deville. Thankfully, she had nothing to do with money in the bank, which is good. Um. <laughs> yeah, Sheamus again was backstage with Boo, Sonya Deville, and Adam Pierce, which is getting to be way too frequent now. And then uh, Charlotte Flair comes out, does a promo. We want Becky. Becky's no longer here. She's breastfeeding. Oh, that image. I've seen Becky Lynch's soft, milky white bosom, naked. Ooh, yeah. Charlotte, you bad person. Rhea Ripley come out, they have, they have a fight. And they say, you know what, we'll just have a match later. Then it was uh, Natalya and Tamina taking on Shayna and Nia Jax. This was good because they're finally putting an end to this. At least Nia was out of that ridiculously winged outfit on the hips. That made her look absolutely terrible. Straight suit. Tamina is no longer a Klingon, which is good to see. So they have the female wrestlers looking like female wrestlers. Good job, WWE. Took you long enough. But yeah, uh, Nia, uh, Nia again is the monster heel. Um, Nettie. Yeah, it doesn't really know what to do, though. And it's something, uh, Shayna gets tagged in, goes for the arm record, and that's how it eats a lot of the, um, offense by Shayna and Nia Jax. Shayna hit the arm breaker, Nia eats a super kick from Tamina, that's great. Reginald acts as a distraction. Again, yeah, now you have a distracted finish. That means you have the roll-up victory by Natalia and Tamina. And finally, Natalia just decides to knock out Reginald. Best move she's done yet. Hey, Naya. I'm single now, too. But yeah, um, I think the end probably put an end to Reggie. Which is good now that with with life crowd we don't need all the backstage garbage. Solid cheeseburger match. However, just when you think we're done, the twenty four seven champion Tazawa comes out. Uh, Reginald rolls him up. Reginald is now the twenty four seven champion. This is getting old. Pretty soon it's going to be worse. But right now I'll say this was a can of soup. Then we had Sheamus taking on Umberto Carrillo. This match was great. Um, much longer match than the last match. This actually told a really good story. Umberto's getting a lot more physical. He's more aggressive. Sheamus realizes that. He comes back with bigger strikes. That's really good to see. Umberto can fly so well. Umberto in NXT was so good. Him. Um, Angel Garza. And Raul Mendoza. Man, they could have been something special in NXT. I do like what they've done with Raul Mendoza. I, I can't fault him for staying in NXT as part of Legado del Fantasma. So again, that's that's good. Um, again, Umberto begins to rip at the mask. However, he's a powerbomb on the apron. Sheamus, a good backbreaker. Oh, backbreaker, so good to watch. Better than done. Umberto flies all over the place. However, he did the dumb thing. Shame he, he tried to hit Sheamus like right in the nose. While wearing that like face protector, hurt his hand. 
Seamus then realizes, hey, I can use this as a weapon. Gives him an Irish headbutt, which is definitely more effective than the Australian headbutt. So, yeah. That was good. And then uh, it's a bro kick. This was a really good match, though. I can't release. And if this is the end of this feud or, or continues it or sets something up, I hope it ends it. And maybe start something between Sheamus and Damien Priest. I'll tell you what, I can't complain about this match. This this was all it was meant to be, probably, for Umberto. Again, he gets inserted into that U.S. title slot, which is good. Not necessarily holding the belt. But you know what, I'll say it's a solid surf and turf match. And then let's see here. Lashley versus Oh Bask in his glory. Keith Lee came back. Yes, 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 yes. Um Yeah, so here the only problem with this match is that this was a, like might as well have been a squash match. Again, Lashley's too um uh, Lashley's too strong in the ring, Lee. Shows the strength outside the ring, however, the spear on the outside and the ground and pound. He could not get the hurt lock on Lee, but instead hits him off with what well, might as well be the no jackhammer needed spear. Bobby Lashley wins. Solid belt retention. Ham sandwich of a match. I mean, oh, why? Why is Goldberg back? Oh, no one wants to see Goldberg versus Lashley. You want Brock Lesnar versus Lashley. I thought SummerSlam. Maybe this ties into Brock Lesnar doing something. Winning the Royal Rumble, maybe. Everyone wants to see Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar. That would be great. But yeah. Uh, Jinder Mahal then does an in-ring promo. I'm sure he just speeds up one of the Shiva boys. I don't know, the, the, the muscled-up Bollywood boys. I f forget what his name is. Then we had Karrion Cross versus Jeff Hardy. Why? Um, especially the way this uh, Cross, again, tosses Jeff out uh, and then until he posts himself. It was a twist of fate. Um, Jeff did miss the Swanton Bomb. The Swanton Bomb wouldn't finish off Karrion Cross. Karrion Cross power bombed. And then uh, uh, Jeff got a foot on the rope barely. And then it was like a distracted roll up win by Jeff Hardy. You just buried Karrion Cross. Why, why would you job out your NXT champion, Karrion Cross? To Jeff Hardy. I mean, I could see having a competitive match with Bobby Lashley or even Sheamus. Jeff Hardy, though, of all people? Has Jeff Hardy really built up that much goodwill in the WWE? I don't know, but I'll tell you what, this match was a can of soup. Then we had Alexis Playground, which, uh, it's okay. It was the same thing of what it was a week ago with Eva Marie and Dewdrop. Eva Marie tripped the dolls there. It is what it's going to be, I guess. Then for our main event of the evening, we had the champion Charlotte Flair taking on the challenger Rhea Ripley in a rematch, which... Was just a rematch of the pay per view, so we got to see this for free. Even though, for the most part, they did the same stuff. Never under never understand WWE. I guess kind of the same stuff. It was a good again. We hit a good drop kick, hits the gut shot. That's pretty good. The good big German suplex by Rhea really on the outside. 
Uh, Charlotte, again, begins to work out for the knees. Uh, Rhea Ripley, again, the knee on the rope, the kick there, the twist there. Uh, Rhea Ripley does sell good. I will always give credit where credit's due. Rhea Ripley's a really great seller. It makes, she makes things look a lot more painful. She's a great, oh, the Northern Lights bridging suplex is such a pretty thing. Uh, Flair hit the moonsault. However, uh, Rhea Ripley had that move scouted. Uh, she brought the knees up. Rhea Ripley tried the figure four. Whoa, Charlotte Flair's dad's move. However, Flair. <laughs> At this point, Flair decides to take her belt and leave. She clocks Rhea Ripley over the belt. We gotta throw the death to finish, baby. Rhea Ripley wins with a ham sandwich of a match. But then Rhea Ripley goes out, beats up Charlotte Flair, Nikki Cross, then, and a surpri utter surprise. We'll see what happens this Monday with, oh, I can't even say her name now. Uh, Nikki Ash. No, I refuse to say that. Nikki Cross. In fact, I will call her Nikki Glenn Cross. That sounds even better. Um, hits, uh, waits for Charlotte to get up. Hits the big splat. Hits the flying crossbody onto Charlotte. What? The next day she cashes in and does it successfully. This is a surf and turf moment, folks. That was Monday Night Raw, a show of many surprises, some good, some not so good. So again, that kind of good mix of shows overall, fairly entertaining. I had that big monstrous salad I had with it. Good stuff. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Um, this video will be going up tomorrow. And... I'll be catching up very quickly, which is always a good thing. See you later. Bye. Oh, yeah, catch more fish. Go fishing.